Welcome to Parking, a definite solution to all your parking related problems and a service that is uniquely engineered to benefit both parking users and providers. Our overall system consists of a very smooth and user friendly app which does most of the hard work for the user. User only needs to enter where he or she plans to go. After a destination is entered, the app displays the shortest route that the user can take to the closest parking location located near the user's destination. This is our actual hardware setup that can be found in the parking lot. It contains a D1 SoC with an RFS board connected to it, a Raspberry Pi that is connected to the D1 SoC, an infrared sensor and a Raspberry Pi camera. When there is no car in front of our infrared sensor, the license plate recognition system is in sleep mode. But when the infrared sensor detects a car, which for the purpose of this demo video is Sanjeev's hand right here the LPR system is activated. We can see from this Raspberry Pi terminal what happens when the LPR system is activated. Once activated, the LPR system automatically takes a picture using the Raspberry Pi camera. This can be seen from the terminal message saying picture taken right here. And once the picture is taken, processing is done over the picture to automatically recognize the license plate number of this vehicle. This processing is aided by the hardware accelerator which performs the image processing filters of grayscaling and resizing. The output picture after these filters is represented by the matrix of pixel values printed out to the terminal. And after all steps of computation, which will be discussed later in this video in more detail a license plate number is recognized which we can see is recognized as INDYWRX in the terminal as soon as the license plate is correctly recognized the role of the RFS Wi-Fi module comes into play the Wi-Fi module is configured as a Wi-Fi web server and the Raspberry Pi is corresponding client now the Raspberry Pi sends the time duration to the web server through an HTTP POST request and the web server calculates and responds with the adequate number of coins that need to be deducted for that time duration. Moreover, the network switching on the Raspberry Pi takes place automatically. After the verification process is complete, the appropriate amount is deducted from the user's account and the user is allowed to park at the pre-booked parking location. By providing this service, we plan to allow vehicle owners to effortlessly park their vehicles in a certain parking space and at the same time make it really comfortable for the parking space owners to maintain their parking areas by facilitating smooth and quick payment transactions. If by any chance on a rainy day, 
our license plate recognition mechanism fails, we have a fully fledged backup plan ready for our user wherein the user can use our fail-safe Bluetooth and QR code verification process. Then the Bluetooth module will communicate with the phone by sending substring or parking ID. If the substring matches with the parking request PID, then the scanner opens. Once the QR scan is successful, the user is now allowed to park. We'll now look into the working of our most crucial subsystem, license plate recognition, which we will refer to as LPR. We will briefly look over the functioning of LPR. So firstly, we created an input image of the car. Then the localization sub-module locates the license plate in the image. And after locating the license plate, we segment the characters by applying three filters. Uh, and then we have all the characters segmented, after which we will run the character recognition model. And then we will have the final license plate number. So we will run the code for the LPR subsystem by pausing in the middle of its execution to see how it works. So here's our input image that we will feed to the LPR. Now the localization will be done using a YOLO v4 model using the TensorFlow library. So as we can see here, uh, the license plate of the car has been localized and we will run the segmentation module. And here we have the hardware accelerator that will perform two of the complex filters of grayscaling and resizing. This is the output of the grayscale and resizing done by the hardware accelerator. Now we will apply the binary threshold which makes each pixel either black or white, allowing us to easily extract the characters from the image. So as we can see here, we have done the binary thresholding and now we will segment the characters. And here's the first character segmented, second one, third one, and so on, until we have got all of the characters segmented. We have just seen all of the characters of the license plate were segmented as we saw the windows prompt up with their images. And the last step that's left to do is character recognition of each of the individual images that was, uh, that was segmented. So for this, we built our own character recognition system from scratch, which we apply a feed forward sequential machine learning model with three hidden layers and, um, it was trained specially on license plate character data set, which causes it to have an increased, um, increased accuracy and, and makes it a specialized model in our case. And the machine learning model was built in the Keras library with TensorFlow as its backend. And if we now look at the output of our program, we see that it has recognized each of the character that it has segment, segmented and it has predicted the output to be INDYWRX. We've seen how LPR functions and we also know that the LPR runs entirely on the Raspberry Pi except for the grayscale and resize hardware accelerated operations that run on the D D1 SOC. But how does the image data transfer from the D Raspberry Pi to the D1 SOC? When the hardware accelerator is not doing any grayscaling or resizing, it is pulling for the start signal from the Raspberry Pi. The image data that is acquired from the Raspberry Pi camera is encoded in a binary file format and sent to the D1 SOC through the Ethernet cable using file transfer protocol. And once the file is transferred through the Ethernet, the Raspberry Pi sends a start signal to the hardware accelerator through the USB cable using serial communication. And then after the hardware accelerator is 
done with the image processing filters, it sends a done signal to the Raspberry Pi through the USB cable using serial communication, which the Raspberry Pi receives the done signal. And when the when it receives it, it gets the binary file encoding output image through the Ethernet cable using file transfer protocol. Then the output image is decoded from the binary file and further processing on it begins. Our backend is on Firebase, which is a backend as a service on the Google Cloud platform. Firebase has multiple services, but we make use of three of them, which is storage, authentication, and Cloud Firestore. Storage is where our app static data, like photos, gets stored. Authentication enables our users to make secure authentications easily. The Cloud Firestore is a real-time database using which our app performs CRUD and REST API functions. For our application, we have four collections in the database. Firestore is very similar to MongoDB in terms of storage. It has the collection and the object format. One interesting fact about Firestore is the objects can have collections within. For our first collection, parking provider, we store all the provider details based on the provider ID. As of now, this collection is empty because we don't have a provider application. The second one is parking request. Here, all the booking requests made by users are stored. They're stored in the form of parking ID and the parking ID as a collection of requests and the requests are so sorted by the user ID. And the in parking variable is to tell if the user is inside the parking or not. Our third collection is parking space and that's stored by their parking ID. It has details related to their location. Our fourth collection is parking users and they're stored by the parking user ID. Each parking user has another collection, coins, which stores the amount of coins they have. And the requests which store the requests they have made. And this is used in the booking history. 